In this video, I'm going to show you how to shuffle up and deal for an American Mahjong game. When you play Mahjong, it's best to have a four-top table. Basically, a square table the size of a card table is ideal. Round tables about that circumference would be good too. I think 36 inch square or something like that. That way you're not reaching too far across from you to get tiles. And also you have room on the sides for drinks and such. So what you're going to do is you're going to set a rack out for each player at the table. You just set it up in a square just like this. And then you're going to put your tiles in the middle and give them a good mix. When you mix them, don't use your card. Some people will use their card like this and throw up the tiles. Not a good idea. You can get chipped tiles that way and it will ruin your game because then People will remember which tiles are chipped and they'll know what they are. So don't use your card or flippers to mix your tiles. Just use your hands. And it's good for everyone to get their hands in there and mix them up. Sometimes people will sit back and let maybe two at the table do it. It can get a little noisy. When I was little, my sisters would do this. So like two of us would do this and one of my sisters would just go like this. Kind of funny, but it's best just to participate. Give the tiles a good mix. Once they're mixed, everybody should build their own wall. And it's not technically their wall. This is a communal wall. It's kind of like when you play cards and you create the deck of cards in the middle for you to draw from. Building the walls around the table is just like that. Our, our picking wall is basically the same thing as a deck of cards in the middle. So we're just gonna set up the tiles around the table. And what you'll wanna do is take the tiles and put them against your rack like this. And you're gonna go usually to the end. Sometimes if there are attachments to the rack called helping hands, you may not need to go all the way to the end. So once you figure out what kind of racks you have, you could always ask the hostess how far to the end to take the tiles. I don't remember with these racks how far we go. We're just going to build the wall and see. So you're going to build all the way across on the bottom and then you're going to build a layer on top. And incidentally, when you're building your wall, take like five or six tiles at a time. Use both hands like this. Just grab however many tiles you can. And that way, building the walls is a lot quicker. And the quicker you build the walls, the more Mahjong you can play. Some people might build the walls with one tile or two tiles at a time like this. They'll just take two tiles and slowly build their wall. I know one person who takes one tile at a time and you know that can take a while to build your wall. So instead just get your hands out there, grab maybe three or four at one time and then use both hands and that way you can easily build your wall with lots of tiles and that way the walls get built really quickly and you can play more Mahjong. So I'm going to build the rest of these walls and then I'll show you how to deal. Okay, for this set of racks, we need to go one over. And this one is kind of halfway over. So you're going to take it one over. So just be flexible. 
and don't get frustrated. Just ask your hostess how many tiles to, to use to build the wall and you'll get used to it. Okay, so now everybody has their tiles. When you play with a deck of cards, a lot of times you cut the deck to decide where to start dealing the tiles. That way people don't stack the deck. There's a similar concept for Mahjong. Instead of cutting the deck, we do something called breaking the wall. And when you break the wall, you use a pair of dice and it randomizes where you start dealing the tiles from. So let me get a pair of dice and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, here's my dice. So you're going to take the dice. Everyone at the table for the very first game will roll the dice and whoever's the high roller will be the first dealer. And really they're not a dealer per se. They're just who, the player who starts the game. Any, whoever is the dealer gets an additional tile at the beginning and discards to start the game. So to figure out who the dealer is, you just roll the dice and then whoever is the high roller will be the first dealer. So we'll just say we're high and this is going to be the first dealer. So the first dealer will then take the dice and they will roll the dice and they'll add the number on the dice. So here we have a four and a five. So we're going to count nine tiles in to break the wall. So we'll just put the dice to the right for the next dealer. And we're going to count right to left nine tiles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Pull your rack back towards you. Two, four, six, eight, nine. And then just make a split in the wall. If you don't pull your rack back, you're going to fumble and spill tiles. Trust me. I've seen it done every time I play the game. So if you just pull your rack back towards you, you won't spill any tiles, hopefully. So here we have nine stacks. Those are gonna remain. They stay right where they are. And I'm gonna talk about that in a few minutes. What you do with the tiles to the left is something called a curtsy. You just push them out and tilt them so that everybody at the table can reach. That's called a curtsy. So we've broken the wall. These tiles remain where they are because we're gonna deal the tiles right here to each of the players. And then eventually we're gonna start picking and discarding one tile at a time along the wall in clockwise order. This is the only thing in the game that goes in clockwise order. So when people break the wall, a, a lot of times they will take the remaining tiles here and push them to the middle like this, or they'll push them all the way to the left. But this is not correct. Don't do this because really this is one continuation of a wall, but when you put the tiles over here, there's a big gap from this wall to this wall. And when people start thinking that they're at the end of the wall over here, they're going to break up their hand and start playing defensively. But yet we have all these tiles to go through still. So you need to keep these tiles to the right where they were originally. Don't move them. So now we have a continuation from rack to rack and wall to wall. So the way you deal the tiles is the dealer or the person who broke their wall, they're going to take four tiles, two stacks, and then you're going to put them in front of you. Uh, basically everyone has their card usually right here in front of their rack. So you're going to put your tiles right here in front of you just as they are, just like this, because um, it's easy to keep track of where you are in the deal. So we're going to go ahead and deal the rest of the tiles. Now 
the D-Link goes counterclockwise. So I just got my tiles. Now we're going to take tiles for this player. So they will reach across and get their tiles. Then this player will continually push the wall forward so that this player can reach. So we'll take our tiles here and here. And now it's back to the original player or the dealer. We're going to take our tiles. And some people wonder, well, why are they called a dealer? In some circles, this player will actually deal the tiles, but you don't see that very often. And it's just kind of a name that's stuck. So don't get hung up on the word dealer. It's really also known as East. So this is the dealer. They're also known as East or player one. So you can call it whatever you want. They start the game. They start the deal, start the game. And um, yeah, that's the way it is for American Mahjong. Okay, so I took my four and now we've depleted that first broken wall. So now we need this wall. And a lot of people get confused as to which wall goes out first or next. Pushing out the walls for picking goes clockwise. That is the only thing in the game that goes clockwise. Everything else goes counterclockwise. So we're going to push out this wall or curtsy the wall. And now this player is going to get their tiles. And this player. And now this player. And it's a courtesy to just keep pushing that wall forward so everybody can reach. And we're going to do this till everybody has 12 tiles. Three stacks. So we have three stacks or 12 tiles because there's four of everything. Four tiles in each pick for the deal. So there's my 12. Okay, everybody has 12 tiles. The dealer or East starts out with their first pick before the Charleston. We'll get to the Charleston in a minute. But the dealer gets one additional tile. That's the only advantage to being East or the dealer. And I'm going to just stagger the top two tiles one and the third one in. This is called one and three, one and three. So when this player takes one additional tile, they're going to have 13, which is the number of tiles you need when you play the game. The 14th tile is your winning tile. As the dealer, they get their first draw or first pick right away. So that's going to be 14 tiles for the dealer, and then after the Charleston, they're going to discard to get the game going and they'll be down to 13, just like everybody else. So I'm gonna stagger these so that you can see. So the dealer is going to take their one. I'm just gonna put it right there. And then this player is going to get their one. So now they have 13. This player is going to get their one. They have 13. And now this player is going to get their one. They now have 13. This player is going to end up with that top third tile anyway. That's why we call it one and three. If anybody ever says to you, take one and three, you know what that means now. That means you need to take the top one count over one so you take the one and three top one and three one and three just remember that east takes one and three after they get their 12 so they end up with 14. east has 14 the other players have 13. so now everybody will look at their tiles and it's courtesy 
and good etiquette to not look at your tiles until everybody has their tiles. One of the reasons that you want to do it that way is in case there's a misdeal, you can back it up and nobody will have seen any of the tiles. If you start looking at your tiles right away and there's a mistake, then it becomes a mess. Well, it's a mess anyway when you mess up the deal, but if you ever mess up the deal, just put your tiles back in, mix them up, build the wall and start over. Redeal. If you have any questions about how to shuffle up and deal for an American Mahjong game, write them in the comment section below the video. The next video, I'll show you how to do the Charleston. The Charleston is where you're passing unwanted tiles to your opponents. You're also going to get tiles. It's quite a dance. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Be sure to click the bell if you do. That way you'll get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next video, may all your picks be keepers.